Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, your programming friend from YouTube and now let's continue the series of MongoDB. Now in case you are from the world of uh, Windows operating system, I wanted to say two things to you. First and foremost, uh, videos for the installation of Windows is actually the next video. So in case you are from feature, you can go there. In case you are with the same timeline, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can know uh, when I'm uploading that video. Two, tip number two is make sure you watch the installation for both Mac and Windows. And now Windows guys will say, hey, why I want to watch the Windows one or the Mac one? The point is, my dear friend, you never know on what system you'll be working when you'll be working for a company or maybe for a project. Sometimes things change and it's really awkward situation that you don't know how to install the exact same thing on which you call yourself an amazing master on a different operating system. It should not be the case. So make sure you watch both the videos just have a feel, maybe watch it in 2x and understand how things are installed here on the Mac environment. If you're from Windows, if you're from Mac, obviously you have to watch it. So let's go ahead and install this uh, thing here. And yes, you notice the new uh, screen here, new wallpaper, because the entire screen is new. This is big, gigantic. Old screen died. So let's go ahead and install that. Now, in case you are thinking to go on to mongodb slash download center and want to download the star.zip file, no, please don't do that. We have a better solution and better approach of installing things on a Macintosh. And I would like to introduce you one thing which in case you are a developer, you might be already aware of it. So it is known as brew.sh. Now brew is a service uh, which is package manager and they call it proudly as the missing package manager of Mac OS. Just like we have yum and apt-get, uh, exactly similar to that. So this video can be helpful for all those people who are on the Linux environment as well, because the problems are exactly same as on Mac as on Linux. It's not that much problematic, by the way. The first thing you have to do is copy this, this entire line, and this is the way how you install brew on your system. Now open up your terminal, we can just zoom it a little bit. And this is a terminal, just hit command space, type terminal, and this is the one. Just paste it up there and it's gonna install the brew. Uh, mine is already installed, that's why it says, hey, uh, we don't want to do that again. And probably it want to update some things and stuff like that. Mine brew is already very up to date, I believe so. In case it want to take some time, we definitely want to give it that time. Uh, make sure it's all updated and all these things. And uh, there we go, it's all done very quickly. So this is the step number one in case you are making the notes. The step number two is optional, but I highly recommend you to do so. We are going to use Node in the very far from in the cities. We will be using Mocha and Mocha works really fine with the Node.js. So now we would like to install Node.js. I highly recommend to follow me along here and we can ask the brew to install it for us. So we are gonna say brew install and we can just say Node. Now this is going to install almost the latest version for us. You can just hit enter. I believe Node is already installed on my system. And it said yes, Brew is already uh, Node is already installed. In case yours is not installed, uh, just go ahead and let it do its thing. In case you want to check the Node version, uh, that is all fine. And mine is 10.5.0. In case you're watching from future, you might be having latest version than this one. That is fine, my dear friend. You don't need to do exact same version. As long as you are having somewhere around like uh, more than five version of the node, that is also totally fine. Okay, that's very stable. Okay, now it comes to installing the hero of the video, which is brew, brew, uh, brew install. And we want to install Mongo now. It's not MongoDB, it's just Mongo. Now this is gonna take some while to just download and install all these things. I directly just visit uh, the GitHub of that or probably wherever the repositories are and uh, just gathers it and install it on the system. The problem is not the installation. Problem is what comes after the installation, the configuration part of the node. So don't worry, I will be walking you through with the configuration part. Actually, there are two errors that we have to face in order to properly understand where we are lagging it. So we're gonna face both the errors. I'm gonna manually fall into that error and we'll show you how you can come back from those errors. So I guess it's gonna take a little bit while and what I can do is I can hit a quick pause on this video so that magic video editing can happen and you don't have to see this bar just filling up till 100. So now that MongoDB is installed and you might have seen these things MongoD. 
Whenever we install any kind of server on a Linux, whether that's Red Hat one or anything as a given fact, they always are run using these D. These, uh, this D actually means daemon. And yes, it exactly spells the same as daemon from any horror movie, by the way. Uh, so we have to start this MongoD daemon server. Uh, so let me hit Control L first of all, so that I can clean my screen and I'm gonna fall into my very first error. So hit the Mongo D to start the daemon and we are gonna see some errors. Now, this is a classic error of MongoDB. I hope I can see some of the uh, things here and can mention what exactly is the problem. Otherwise, I have to tell you. <laughs> so I guess they are not able, there we go. This is, this is really hard to find. This is exactly the reason of the very first error. Whenever you install the MongoDB on a Linux or on a Mac, uh, it just looks up for a default data directory here. In our system, the default directory is not ever present, whether that's a flavor of Debian, Ubuntu, any given uh, flavor of the Linux, Mac including. So we have to create this directory and we're gonna solve our very first issue, but we are gonna fall into the next one. So how we can do that? It's actually really simple. Uh, we're gonna create a directory, make sure you use the sudo command because it requires administrative purposes, administrative privileges here. And we're gonna use a shortcut of uh, hyphen p here. So we're gonna say slash data slash db. Now make sure, make sure, this is warning. Make sure the slash is there before the data. If you are not gonna be putting a slash here, that means you are doing absolutely wrong. I know even after telling this one, so many people will the, in the comments will be saying it. So make sure you hit the slash data slash DB. And I'm gonna hit enter. Uh, it sometime asks a password, but uh, I guess it's not asking me. Uh, I guess the P command is not recognized here. I guess it's a capital P, uh, my bad. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna hit the cooler. There we go. So sudo. Okay, my bad, I forgot the main command, which is uh, mkdir. Come on, that was unacceptable. mkdir to make a directory, and uh, hopefully now we have a data directory. My bad, totally my bad. I wanted to create a directory. Okay, we don't need to verify that. I believe it has done its task, so there we go. So the directory is done, so now we are expecting to run this mongod command but it's gonna still fall into one more error, one or one more gotchas. Uh, there we go, and I hope I will be able to show you the error again. Uh, it says, uh, again, this error is still here, uh, but actually the problem is not this one because we can see that the directory is there. To confirm it, we can just do a cd slash, and I can write da and hit the tab. That means data is there. If I hit the tab again, we can see that the db is here. So the problem is not the directory. If I can see that, uh, it is really hard to find that error again. And there we go. It says, attempted to create a log file on a read-only directory. And the directory is there, but it's still terminating. So this is a classic problem of the privileges or also known as permissions. Uh, what I mean by that, you have created that, but in the Linux system, there are so many permissions, we have to figure it out as well. So follow this command here again, it's actually really, really simple to change the permissions. I will not forget the permission command again. So we're gonna do a sudo. We want to change the ownership of that, so its command is chown. And uh, to whom we want to give the permission? That's also an interesting question. In order to answer that, first we have to ask the system, who am I right now? So if I say, who am I? My system name is Studio, that's my computer name. And you, you will get yours name a little bit different, so make sure you get that first. And then we can use sudo and change the ownership of that directory. We're gonna use the shortcut commands of R and V. And now we're gonna write the name of our computer, whatever who am I returns us back. And now we're going to change the permission of data slash DB. So both of them, I want to change it. There we go. Now, finally, we can run the Mongo D here, Mongo D and hit that enter. Now you're going to see a lot of things here, but these are not error. This is how server runs. And uh, we cannot verif verify it right now. We will be doing it verification a little bit later, but as long as you get something like this, uh, it is all good and it is all working. What we can do uh, is we can just go and open up the new terminal. So I'm gonna just hit the shell and uh, new tab. And there we go, we got a new tab here and I can run a simple Mongo here, Mongo. And hit enter. Uh, as long as you get this 
ticky arrow thing that means your mongo is working good make sure you open this into the new terminal not in this one because this needs to keep up and running whenever we want to go that if you're getting this one here that means everything is awesome and fine but here are a couple of gotchas for you for the future as well now mongodb we have installed it as a service our database is running as a service whenever we want to work with it this service should be up and running so there are a couple of options uh, the first one is a little bit not so good which is every time you want to watch my tutorials or want to work with the mongodb just come up and write mongod on the terminal leave it up and running all the time you want to work it and just open up another shell where you just want to work or do whatever you want to do so this is not so good approach because i know many time you will be forgetting to um, uh, starting this mongo daemon here and will be complaining hey my code is not working not a good approach not a good approach honestly so we're going to hit the control c here to quit the uh, this mongo here i'm going to hit control c to close down this here as well so that we can uh, work on a different solution here so we have shut down the mongodb for a moment here now type this command along with me these are something which is related to brew so what i want you to do is brew services start mongo okay and hit the enter one it's not going to do much it's going to just do a few fancy stuff what it is doing it is installing mongodb on your system as a default service what it will do whenever the next time you'll restart your computer automatically a mongo service is going to be running on your computer again after you restart your computer next time when you come up you don't need to do mongo d on a one terminal and then mongo onto another terminal you don't need to do that if you have run this command otherwise in case you don't want to use that much of resources uh, you can just use the previous method hit the mongo d on the terminal and on the next one just go ahead to uh, the regular mongo stuff again restart is compulsory here okay uh, so this was a quick installation of Mongo on a Macintosh as well as the same thing works on your Ubuntu, on your Linux or all the flavors of that because uh, it is exactly the same. There we don't have brew, we have apt-get and yum in case whatever the flavor of Linux you are installing and working on with. So that's it for this video. Uh, in case you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You know the regular stuff, stuff blah, 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 <laughs> subscribe and all of that. In case you are on a Windows world, uh, make sure you watch the next video where we're going to install the MongoDB on a Windows environment. That's it, and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.